Yeah! What's up, Sooner fans? This is your host, Jeremiah Hall, formerly number 27 on the field, but always number one in your hearts. Here with me today, you know who it is. My right-hand man, number nine on the field, the Braden Wait Room Willie Willis. And this is the podcast on the prairie. B. Jay, I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling your energy, though. I, I'm, I'm feeling like it. That. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, first pod in a while after a dub. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm feeling Bro. the energy, man. I'm feeling different today. You see, I didn't even start over. Like, normally, if I stutter on the intro, ladies and gentlemen, I always start over because I always want a smooth introduction. But today, I'm just like, I'm happy. The sun's out. It's a little cloudy outside, but I'm still happy. I was going to say the um, sun's not out, but, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, the sun is not out this Sunday. It's but the sun's cloudy. out for us because we won, so. Yes, the sun is out in uh, our spirits, okay? So I'm just going with the flow today. Um, I don't really have an agenda because I was writing stuff down before we hopped on here, and I was like, bro, like, if I say everything that I just wrote down, like, we're going to be on here for at least two hours, so. Before we get into the show, this episode of The Pod is presented by Plainview Legal Group. For the last couple of weeks, you've heard us talk all about Plainview Legal and their expertise in property law and protecting land rights of the people of Oklahoma. Well, they are way more than even that. Plainview Legal Group also handles estate planning and probate, from simple wills to providing undue influence. Additionally, their attorneys negotiate, draft, review, and litigate all kinds of commercial contracts for individuals and businesses across various industries throughout Oklahoma. Haley and Travis Dennis are kind of like dual threat quarterbacks. You know, they're cool, calm, and collected in very, very tricky situations. OU has produced dual threat quarterbacks like Kyler, Jay Hurts, and we could even throw in Baker. They also produce dual threat lawyers, Haley and Travis Dennis. They are both OU alums and have five degrees between them. To schedule your free consultation, visit their website at www.plainviewlegal.com or give them a call at 405-310-0183 or even email them at info at plainviewlegal.com. Big thanks to our presenting sponsor, Plainview Legal Group. Clarity when you need it. Please see show notes for disclaimer information. Um, I'm going to just let today... Go where it goes and uh, let my happiness take over for this episode. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I'm, I'm with that. <laughs> you with it? So, I'm with it. Um, I don't even know where to start, bro. Just per usual, how was brunch? Your family was in town this weekend. We also saw the mm -hmm. beautiful picture that your mom always posts. I'm like, I love it. Um, I will say, before you tell me about your weekend, let me tell you this. I love that picture because I think I took that a little bit for granted. You know, it, um, mm -hmm. when I was there, I'd always just be like, you know what? It's crowded down at the bottom. Like, I'll see y'all. I'll see my family, like, after I get out the locker room and everything. And um, I think we only got a couple of those, you know. But yeah. in the moment, you're not really thinking about how you'll how you'll feel, like, a year from now. You're just like, yo, like, I'm tired. Like, Right. Uh, I, I'll see you in like 15 minutes. Just give me a quick little whatever. So to see y'all take the picture and to see them stay and support you guys is uh, a beautiful thing. So I I enjoy seeing you guys take the picture. But yeah, I saw I saw you say that on uh, on Twitter. You like I, I'm getting used to these weekly uh, yeah these posts or I like the weekly posts. But yeah, man, like you know I'm not a big picture guy or nothing like that. Yeah, but. Um, like you said, I just have to remind myself that this is a short, you know, period of time in my life. And I'm grateful for my parents and, you know, my auntie and uncle and all my family that comes to see me. So, you know, it's getting them pictures, yeah. you know, pictures last longer, making memories, man. It's it's just, you know, it's just, it's such a wholesome look like you look at it and you just see the smiles and all you guys look alike. I've already said your mom's yeah. like <laughs> super strong. And I'm just like, man, like this is such a beautiful family, you know, so. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. But how was uh how was this morning? How was the morning W? Uh how was brunch? Oh man. Morning W. <laughs> Love it, man. You know, 
Woke up feeling good, man. Body hurt a little bit less. You know what I'm saying? After a dub. Uh, just wait, everything. wait, wait. Your, your, your body hurts less after a 100-yard game? After a dub, man, it feel like everything is well in the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, uh yeah, man, I woke up feeling good and uh went to brunch with the fam and you know, it's funny that um you say that because at brunch we were over there talking about how the the nicknames have kind of like evolved and I was like J Hall has too much of an influence because I don't know how it's turned to what it's turned. Like you got OU football using weight room Willie and you know, people at the Walker Champions, hey, wait room Willie, and that like that's just, it's just you know it's normal now. Like kids and you know just everybody's doing it. Now. I mean, it's kind of cool. You know, I love it. So, uh, but yeah, you have too much of an influence because everybody uses it now, bro. It's like you have a uh, a different persona now. Like you know yeah. how um, do you know about you know Nicki Minaj, right? Right. You know how she has like her her Roman like flip side, you know? I didn't like her. Know. <laughs> well, now you know, bro. It's like your alternative alternative personality. Like your alternative personality on the field is like weight room Willie, bro. Like when you <laughs> made that catch right in front of the end zone, which you should have scored. By the way, that was like what did uh what does coach normally say? Either you you get on ESPN or you yeah. just get on Sooner, Sooner Scoop. Scoop. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Either yeah. it's a, a 20 yard gain, here's Braden Willis for a 20 yard game, or it's a dun na dun na na Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, great catch. Um, you did your job well. And uh, the way you flexed on that little dude, I'm like, yo, <laughs> yo, he lifts. I lifted with <laughs> him. <laughs> we lift. <laughs> I well, your tweet, man. I, that's yeah. what I look forward to. I look forward to your tweets after the going. To, I go on your I go on your Twitter page and I go and look at the tweets after the game, and then the responses. It's hilarious, bro. <laughs> bro, Alex always texts me during the game, bro. He's like, Jay Hall, you could say anything, and uh, it can do like over 300, 400 likes. And I'm like, you know what, bro? I try and make sure I save my ammo for quality tweets, right? No because doubt. my mom. My mom told me, my mom, what I'm learning, bro, as I get older, my mom is just always right, bro. Like, it could be anything. So my mom was like, Jay Hall, everybody's always looking forward to what you're saying after Braden scores or after you do a play. So although you're looking forward to seeing my tweets, I'm looking forward to see you make plays. So we're just like feeding <laughs> off of each other, okay? So <laughs> she's like, make sure that you have good tweets every time because I promise you everybody's going to your page. So I'm like, okay, mom, I'm going to make sure I use my ammo wisely, okay? So I try and make sure that not only do I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I try and make sure I make you look good, okay? Appreciate so. That. Always thank yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always appreciate it. Thank yourself. Always. Matter of fact, in one of those crazy comments that you're talking about, one of the fans was like, Jay Hall, you got to bring the unclipped hat back. Because people were clowning me at first. But then that was the last time we won a game. I'm pretty sure. I, I got to go back and double check. But I was like, yo, it's only right. I think I found the formula. Obviously, I think we found our formula too. We, I think we yeah. found ours too at the we. So DP and I have this thing, right? So yeah. I don't know if you remember, but some of the old players that were there with Schmitty, like that are coaches now, like Joe John and you know Coach Coop and all of them. Mm -hmm. We have this thing where when we're stretching, we go down our, we get our hammies, we clap, and then we go down and get our hammies. That all the older guys was like, hook that middle finger in his voice. You know what I'm saying? So now <laughs> we all say it hook that middle finger, like hook it up under our, you know, toes so we could get a good stretch. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at the, the beginning of the season, the first three games, we were winning. And when I was, me and Coach Coop would say it at the same time, and DP was like, okay, I hear y'all. And then the last three games, he was like, oh, I only hear Coach Coop. And I would be like, you know, as a joke, you know. And so then, you know, this week of practice, we're like, Let, let's just go back to how it was the first three games because – I don't know. Something's <laughs> off. So we were like, you know, me and Coach Cooper both say it. And then he'd be like, yes, I heard everybody. I heard everybody that time. Making sure. Just mm -hmm. putting it in the atmosphere. I'm like, watch, we're about to win this game now because we're we going back to the, the basics. I but think yeah. it is time 
for all of Sooner Nation to reflect and go back to whatever you did three weeks ago <laughs> and bring back out that juju because we have found the answers between my hat, Braden's on-field activities with the team, and uh, our captain's leadership is just – that's that's what it's going to take the rest of the season. So that's what we're rolling with. Um, then you got a whole – Oh, you got a whole bye week to to remember and then write it down, okay? Mm -hmm. No doubt. So we don't forget. <laughs> note, note to self. <laughs> note to self, man. It has been a, a beautiful weekend. It was homecoming weekend. Uh, I didn't go to the game. I stayed home. Um, I had a long week personally, and it was the first time that I could just chill. So people were texting me during the game. They're like, yo, Jay Hall, where you at? I'm like, I'm at the crib. Have a blast, though. So, yeah, um, I'm glad you guys put on for uh, homecoming. Right. So let's uh, let's move on to what we have next. Brayden, have you noticed how expensive everything is these days? I have. It's pretty crazy. But good thing we're getting paid big bucks from the podcast. Wait, hold on. You getting paid? No, no, that was definitely a joke. Bro, hold on, Alex. Well, anyways, everything seems more expensive these days, and home prices and rates are no exception. Homes, however, retain their value. So while home ownership may seem expensive, not building your equity will cost you even more. Get your own home equity now. Where Properties Group helps buyers just like you get the most home for their money. Phil and Thaline Webb at Where Properties Group are waiting to hear from you. The team is ready to get you the best deal possible on the home that's right for you. Call now at 405-322-5632, and they will happy to send you a list of available homes. And since we're talking about saving money, let the McDaniel Mortgage Group help you cut back on mortgage rates. Call Matt with the McDaniel Mortgage Group at 214-435-1988 or visit www.appwithmatt.com with two T's.com to get pre-qualified today. All right, back to the show. A crazy weekend, not only for the Sooners, but around the world in college football, looking at Ellis, not LSU, Iowa State, um, looking at Alabama, Ole Miss, almost getting brought down by Auburn. Uh, the NC State-Syracuse game, that turned out to be uh, a good matchup. Clemson, Florida State, and so on and so forth. So we haven't done an upset pick in a while. Um, I definitely wouldn't have picked Tennessee to beat Bama. Actually, I was anticipating Tennessee to get rolled over, but I would have. I actually called yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I wish we would have said not. it earlier this week because I, I've been saying it since I, I watched the Tennessee uh, Tennessee game like three weeks ago or something like that, maybe week two. And I was like, bro, mm -hmm. their quarterback, man, that boy can play. And I've been saying it yeah. for weeks. I'm like, that boy can play. I don't know what it is, but he just got it. And you know what I'm saying? So when they when they went, I was like, I don't know. Tennessee might, especially at their crib. And you know how it gets up in there. And I I was like, yeah, if anybody going to do it. I said it was – I was thinking yeah. it was either going to be them or it was going to be uh, TCU. The, TCU. Which, you know, that happened too because, T, you mm -hmm. know, TCU is a good team. So – yeah, my dad, what, I talked to him this morning, and he was like, bro, like, you played basketball against the quarterback at Tennessee. I was like, what? And he always does this. He's like, yeah, you played against them. Like, he was on the other team, and he expects me to remember. I'm like, bro, like, I was 11 years old. <laughs> right. I don't know how you expect me to how to expect me to remember that. But anyway, shout out to you, dad. Apparently, uh, the quarterback for Tennessee is from North Carolina. Uh, Dudley specifically for anybody knowing where that is. And I played against him when I was little. Um, years later now, he trans he went to what Virginia, Virginia Tech, now is at Tennessee. So uh heck of a game. Honestly, I thought Bama was gonna come back. Like when I when they started putting up points, I'm like, okay, here's Nick Saban in the too. comeback squad. That's why I said, I said, man, Bama boy, they just it's Bama, you know what I mean, but yeah, they stuck it through. They did. They stuck it through. Uh, TCU up on Okie State. Didn't watch that game, but I'm honestly not surprised. Well, because, TCU like you came just back. said, TCU. Yeah, TCU came back that game. Okay, State was running for a little bit. TCU came back, but, man, they were uh, – their, their receiver, TCU's receiver and running back combo, uh, I think the running back is Miller. And then number one, I can't remember his full name, but number one, the receiver, man, they – 
those are those are some ballers, bro. They can play. And uh, they leaned on them a little bit, and they were producing. So they got back in that game, tied it up, went to overtime, ended up winning it. Once they went to overtime, I was like, yeah, TCU is winning this game. Yeah. That Johnston kid, number one, he had eight receptions, Johnson. 180 yards. That's that's who I'm that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. He's gonna you be a good him. he's gonna be a good NFL guy. He's gonna be a first round uh, draft pick. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a first rounder. We were talking about big, him when he played us. Yeah, big, can catch, can run, great after the catch. He's gonna, you know, first round guy. Yep. Utah <laughs> beating up on USC. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before you start cheering uh please all right let's 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 take a moment to acknowledge the fact that i know some of us do not like lincoln riley and um for those of you who don't know i am not one of those people who do not like lincoln riley okay i was also talking to my dad about this game this morning and he was like yo like i'm on twitter and uh sooner fans are really like a jealous ex right now like we're just (laughs) <laughs> we're stubborn we're emotional we're preying on the downfall of somebody who actually treated us pretty well and we're not accustomed to um people leaving us like we are right. always used to people like uh oh use the best oh use this and that and the one person in, in the one time somebody doesn't say something good about oh you uh they up and leave and we get butt hurt so um, it's crazy to see the fans on social media respond to USC getting beat. But um, did you see the quarterbacks crying at the end of the game, uh, mm-hmm. Caleb? Yeah. yeah, I thought that was weird from the announcers' perspective. I don't know what's going on with the announcers nowadays, but like, yeah, maybe. they were like, yeah, I think you said it earlier, right? Like, uh, yeah, they um. It kind of ran me hot a little bit, you know, but they were just like, yeah, they just, they just, sometimes they just be talking. They're like, yeah, they're crying because both teams love the university. And I was like, y'all don't even be knowing what y'all are talking about. Like, what, what, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> but I mean, there's no here or there, but I, I saw a lot of people advocating for you to be up there. People be like, I'd be watching the game in silence or just put on music and just, you know, and oh, that's really bro. what it's coming to, bro. It's like, oh, man. Bro, let me tell you about these announcers. From Matter of fact, wh- let me finish around the world. Let us finish around the world in, in college football first, they and then we'll move it. on to your game. Oh, you Kansas? Oh, my. Don't get me started, bro. Um. Anyways, give me one second before I start my rant on that. Uh, <laughs> Caleb, guys, I love Caleb. We on the podcast are a fan of Caleb Williams. He got us our big break. Um, for those of you who don't know, whenever we had Caleb on this episode, that's when we pretty much blew up. Everybody wanted to know no who this five-star kid was that brought us back from Texas, right? So we love Caleb and the fact that he lost. Um, I'm not saying we feel bad for him or anything like that, but I just don't like the Caleb hate, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, the, the kids yeah, are like, Yeah, like I, Caleb is – Caleb is, I don't even know how to explain Caleb. Caleb is like no other kid I've ever met before. He's different. He literally rides his own wave. He doesn't care what anybody thinks. And uh, he's going to do him. And I respect that, right? Because even me and what all I've accomplished, I'm still influenced by other people. And for a guy that's so young, I think Caleb's still like, what, 19? Yeah. I don't even think Caleb is 20 years old yet, you know? And he literally has the weight on his shoulders, weight of the world on his shoulders. He's got a million-dollar contract with Beats and all this and that. And people are looking at him like he's a grown man out here with personal hate towards our university. I'm just like, bro, nah, that ain't it. So I've had to call out some people on that. Um, Some people were also clowning JB yesterday. I called some people out on that too. So um, I'm going to hold it down for my teammates, man. You know, I'm going to make sure I – I represent y'all off the field during the games and whenever I'm around. So, uh, is it it, anything else happening in college football that uh, I'm missing? We're missing. Well, I will say I thought Penn State was going to do a little bit more with Michigan, but Michigan ran was running, you know, toting that rock on them. So that got out of hand. Bro, what is up with people trying to fight Michigan in the tunnel? Every time that happens, they lose. Yeah, I don't know. I think Ohio State did that. 
last year or two years ago. Well, that always happens in that game. Yeah. And then, no, but the same thing happened to Penn State, I think, within the past three years. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anybody who's a Michigan fan, tell the other team to pipe down whenever they go into the locker room. (laughs) Unless you're playing for OU and you're uh, playing Texas, then uh, anything happens down there in that tunnel. Speaking of Texas, um, Iowa State definitely should have beat them. But um, they couldn't follow through. So I'm tired of seeing Texas fans in my mentions, bro. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, moving on to (laughs) our game, right? Kansas versus OU. Bro, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. For the first time, I was a little nervous. In the last ad read for I-9 Sports, I talked about my favorite memory for uh, you sports, Jay. Curious to hear what yours is. Bro, when I was 12 years old, I went up to Cooperstown, New York, and I had a blast playing baseball. I was knocking home runs all outside the park. We love our sponsor, I-9 Sports, because they are giving kids in the Edmond, OKC area, UConn, Moore, and Norman these same memories. They offer basketball, volleyball, baseball, soccer, and even flag football. We know life as a parent gets crazy, and so does I-9 Sports. That's why they've made their leagues as convenient as possible. Practices and games are on the same day, so it's just a one-day commitment. Practice first, then gameplay. Leagues are seven weeks long, and kids' age groups vary from 3 to 14 years old. I-9 told us many of you have already signed your kids up for their leagues, which we love to hear. If you haven't already, you can sign your kid up at i9sports.com. And we have a special offer to our listeners. When you use promo code PRAIRIEPOD, that's P-R-A-I-R-I-E, POD, You get $10 off your registration. Thanks to I-9 Sports for their support of the show. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. I I had all the faith in you guys. It wasn't like a nervous, like, are they going to win or are they going to lose? Like, I I knew y'all were going to win, but I was just like, eh, I don't know. (laughs) Like, somebody asked me, Jay Hall, should should I pick the over or the under? And I'm like, honestly, bro, like, I have no clue, so. How did you feel going into this game? Man, you know, I told you I felt great at the beginning of the week. Um, the, listen, man, the margin between winning and losing in college football, especially at this level, this conference, is very, very, very thin. You know what I'm saying? And not everybody can see it because everybody on the outside, they look at the scoreboard and they let that determine how they feel about the game. You know, and so they don't really go in depth to watch it, to watch film and see what went on to why it went like that, you know. So, like I said before, we know we know we had to work on and we know where we went wrong. And, you know, going into the game, getting DG back, you know, we just, you know, feel a lot comfortable. You know, this is a guy that I told the media, this is a guy that, you know, came in and from the jump, it felt like he had been here five years. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I had known him for a while and. You know, he starts doing team bonding and we start going out to dinner like as an offense. And, you know, we do the dime time retreat and there's all this stuff to to get to a point of where like the whole offense is just super comfortable with eight back there leading us, you know. So I think getting him back there gave us a little bit of a calming, you know, a sense of like a cooling, like calming type of you know, since I guess like you had and, your guy uh, back on the ability. field. Yeah. Had our guy mm-hmm. back, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he just brings that as a leader too. And, um, you know, it, it was good to have him back. So I was honestly surprised that he was playing. Um, well, I wouldn't say surprise, but when they said that he might play, I was just like, eh, we'll see if he actually plays. And then once he actually got on the field, I was uh, a bit nervous for him, specifically as the game went on. And he started running. And I was just like, ooh, please get down, bro. Please get down. Because, uh, like I said on the previous podcast, um, I want all the success for sh- the Sooners. Like, I, I want y'all to blow out everybody. But I'm also um, an advocate for the players, right? So I wanted, I was a little bit concerned. So, I'm glad I can yeah. see him out there moving healthy, uh, moving good, and um, 
like you said, y'all had that sense of comfortability back. Um, I think you guys started out the game well, um, specifically um, getting the ball out quick. You could tell, like, the offense was kind of catered towards DG and what all happened last week because it was a lot of it was a lot of quick play action. It was a lot of uh, a quick reads, quick slants, quick curls, quick hitches, and then you know mix it up as the game went on in terms of the deeper routes. But I like the the, the direct snaps and and all that. Honestly, I think. I think we should just stick with that moving forward because I don't know how you feel about DG as a quarterback. And I'm not, I'm matter of fact, you don't even have to respond to this, but honestly, I think the faster he gets the ball out, the better he is because you look at a lot of the highlights from last year and, in, in USC or where he was at Levy before. Most of them come from like quick hitters, you know, like, I'm not going to lie. The longer he has the ball in his hands, I'm not going to say the worse he is, but I think you guys have found what works because it was working at the beginning of the season, the quick hits and the rest of the stuff. Um, I think y'all should keep that up. I love the Wildcat. Um, yeah, bro. I just, I love Levy's playbook. I think he does well adjusting to his players. You know, I think yeah. honestly, you should have advocated for some more Wildcat this week, but I, it all worked out. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, you know me. I just do whatever, you know, I can for the team. But <clears throat> as far as DG, man, I I mean, it, okay, here it, here's the deal, right? Yeah. I, I love the kid, and I think he has great arm talent and everything. And I don't necessarily agree. I think he takes great deep shots, and we actually started the game – with these like just straight up deep shots this is really option routes right and targeting okay. the same guy but then on the third one he hit me on the little you know the over dot we call it occupy but um i think i think it's one of those deals where the last couple of weeks we start the game off running the ball and so then we're we're so you know wanting to run the ball, establish the run, and everything. We don't get the you know we don't get to pass the first drive, and we kind of get behind. And it's one of those mm -hmm. type of things. If you let him start slinging that thing early, once he gets in the rhythm, boy, it's it's tough to start that stop that man. You know what I'm saying? So I like how Levy just had full confidence in him coming back and was like, hey, like just you know from the jump, like just start slinging that thing. You know, yeah. and then you saw once we start slinging that thing, getting it going, you know, then we could then they're on their heels and then boom, we start hitting them with the run game. EG had a great game, great 176, game. two touchdowns. You know, Tay came in there. He did some really good things. And, um, you know, our, our offensive line don't have to be on their heels the whole time because they're, they're just key in the run. You know what I'm saying? They're not just loading the box and key in the run. You know, we got them on the heels from the get go. You know, got the, airing the ball out. Now we could, you know, hit some of our, you know, runs and get some good yardage out of it and loosen them up a little bit. So I think he did a great job with the game plan. I think DG, like I said, once he gets in the rhythm, man, he could throw with the yeah. best of them. So it's all about, you know, getting him some confidence, getting him in the rhythm. And like I said, once he get going, that boy tough now. I think you guys did a good job of, like you said, getting him in rhythm, especially after what happened last week. I can imagine from his perspective, possibly being a little bit nervous, a little bit, eh, I'm going to ease my way back into this. But after that first drive, it was just like, man, like there, there is no easing back. Like we're just full force here. One thing I will say that you guys did do well from an offensive perspective is get that boy Marvin the ball. Yeah. Um, Marvin's, you know, I, I love Drake. I love Theo, but Marvin, Marvin's the guy, you know, Marvin's <laughs> Marvin is marvelous. And I don't know. I forgot to pull up his stats, so I don't have them right in front of me, but I could Nine imagine. Receptions, 106. Yeah. It was a lot of yards. So yeah. he was out there making plays. Um, The kid from Freeman. Yeah. The Oklahoma native. Oh my goodness. It was funny you, because um even the announcers thought it was Drake cuz Drake Drake had a hot start. I don't know if I don't think I give Drake enough credit. Drake had a had a hot start. You know, I think I'm just so used to seeing him play, seeing him make plays and stuff. Um Theo loves Theo. Um Drake loved Drake. Marv um just gave him 
uh, the love. I want to make sure I touch up on those boys and let them know that, like, yo, like, we appreciate you as well. But the new kid, you know, one, seeing him on the reverse at the beginning of the year, some people might say that's a fluke. Oh, it was a one great play. But now he shows up again? Uh, I don't know. We might see a, a, a future baby Drake, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's what we all, that's what we say. He's gonna be like Drake in the future. He just he got you know a little bit more straight line speed. Now you marry his speed um, with Drake's route running ability because we all know Drake is probably yeah. our Drake's best route runner. Route. Like come yeah. on now, like I don't know, and I don't even know if our fans know that for real. But oh, I mean yeah. they should go, go ahead. But, Let, so talk more on that because the fans don't know. They, they don't, don't know. know. You know, it, it's funny because a lot of the stuff that we see in practice that we think is common knowledge amongst yeah. the players, the the fans think all oh, totally different. You know, yeah. like Drake probably has the best routes on the team. Um, he does. Does have the best routes yeah. on the team. The man is shifty. Yeah. Lateral movement is crazy. He's quick. You know what I'm saying? Y'all always wonder why he gets open so easily. It's, it's because of that. And he... I told them um, they were, they asked me about Gavin. They said, you know, were you surprised by the catch? And I said, no. And they were looking at me kind of crazy. I was like, bro, y'all don't understand. In practice, you see the craziest see the stuff. You don't understand that we're practicing. We play football, you know, five, six months out of the year, but the other five, six months out of the year, we're still practicing. You know what I'm saying? We're practicing every day. So you don't understand the amount of crazy stuff I see that happens in practice, comparatively speaking to the game. You know, we only play mm-hmm. 12 games. We have about a couple hundred practices a year. You know what I'm saying? So you see some crazy stuff. And, um, you know, we like, like I said, Drake is Drake's routes are, you know, the stuff. But, uh, yeah, you know, once you, you get Gavin Freeman, you know, use his athleticism. You marry that with him learning from Drake and his routes and his route tree. He's going to be tough in the future, man. Mr. Willis. We talked about this a little bit earlier. He lifts weights. He's moving people out the hole. He's bullying safeties. Let's give you some more flowers, bro. Five catches, 102 yards. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bro, I'm, I can't, I am, I can't do anything but be happy for you, bro. I've never had a 100 yard game, or I never had a 100 yard game in college that I can remember. I think I was close. I think I was like 70, 80. Right. But 100 yards, bro, somebody should get you a, uh, just some type of photo and just put my first 100 yard game like as like a little memento i might have that made for you or something by the end of the year but how do you oh, feel? I like that man i feel great like you said it's the first one and it, it's special because of just my journey and kind of you know everything that's went on you know i gotta you know media is media so i, I can't you know say too much yeah. about the guy but during the media session a guy you know he asked, he was like, uh, you know, in the past, you've made catches, you've made some plays, you know what I'm saying? But this is the first time we've really seen you, you know, yards at the catch, da, 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 da. And he said, so, you know, how did you get to be that point? And I was like, well, you know, yeah, all glory goes to the men you've upstairs. You've always been there. But That's what you should have said. <laughs> I, I did say it. I said, all glory goes to the men upstairs. And all shout out to my teammates. You know, DG got to put it there. Line got to block well, receivers. But I've always kind of been that guy. I just don't feel like I ever really got the chance to, you know, shine, whether it was injuries or, you know, the depth in the room or, you know, just not the lack of – um involvement of the tight end in general because you and you i and stog both all three of us know that there was a significant drop in you know just the production and tight end because we just weren't really used like you know as much oh. as you know they used to be like with grant and mark and them so um they're like where did this come from i'm just like i mean it's kind of always been there like i've always been a great route runner i've always done well yards after the catch you know that's kind of was my like thing coming into yeah uh, 
coming into college, you know? So I think people were going to be, I thought my college career was going to shape up that people were going to be more surprised by my blocking than they are with how I am with the ball in my hand, but it's been kind of opposite. They're used to the blocking. They're not used to me doing stuff with the ball in my yeah. hand. So, you know, like I said, he's part of the media. They don't know what goes on during practice. Like if you were to ask any of the teammates, you know, any of the defensive guys, they'd be like, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know that yeah. because they're not at practice. They just see what happens during the game. So Bro, I'm telling um, you, man, we have always been here, bro. Like it's crazy because like you look at Marvin, you look at Drake and like you're like, yeah, like receivers run routes, receivers make plays. They're like offensive linemen, they block, they get pancakes, quarterbacks, they throw the ball, running backs, they run the ball, juke people out, truck people. And then you kind of like get to the tight ends, H backs, who historically, like you said, haven't been in the passing game as much since Mark was there, since Mark was here. And we do it all the time in practice. It's like it, I'm glad some light has finally been shown in the tight end room because we have always been here, bro. Like I wish I had so many more opportunities back in, back in college, but I mean, I can't do anything about that, but be yeah, happy they, they for just you don't now. understand. It's the same yeah, thing like, with you. It's the same thing with star. I mean, some of the things and um, practice, you know, it's, it, it, it's just real fun to me. It's, it's crazy how things shape up sometimes, you know, um, it, everything works out for a reason bro no and doubt. i promise you people are seeing your hard work the fans are seeing your hard work jim naggy jim <laughs> naggy you know you're doing something right when you get the post from jim naggy bro like what no doubt we got, no we, we got alex posting about the the mackie award text i think so, that went over a lot of people's head alex yeah. and i were talking about that i don't know if people really realize the the what Alex posted on the podcast page with the Mackie, that was the Mackie award. And, you know, he's acting like I was saying sup to it, but you know, I think that went over a lot of people's head, but I thought that was hilarious though. I, I cracked up when I saw that. I thought that was so funny. Yes, bro. I was, I was low key. Like, man, like just go bro. Like I, I, they kept throwing the ball to other people. I'm like, just keep throwing the ball to Braden. Like, <laughs> but no, nah, man, honestly, bro, like, I, I can't say anything more than I'm proud. Um, I'm happy for you. Um, so much more to come, but just keep doing, keep being humble, keep leading the team, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Cause I, uh, like I said before, I'm somewhat living through you. So for let's sure. keep going. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, Jay Hall has a little bit of a bullfrog breakdown where, um, I'm going to be a little critical of OU football after this weekend. I know we're coming off the high of the win, but um, I have some things to talk about from my own perspective that we're not going to ask Braden to be involved in. Okay. So uh, where do I start? Right. I, ha I have a list. Okay. So I have some good things and um, I have some bad things. Right. So, um, well, first off, Let's start with the good things. Let's start with the stuff that Braden can talk about, too. The young Fair. guys, the young guys, Barnes, we already mm -hmm. talked about Freeman, but let's let's touch on Barnes a little bit. Bro, he's going to be good. I thought I'd said that on a podcast. I don't know. I think I might have said that earlier, during spring, maybe. I'm not sure. But I said that at one point. I said, that boy, he's going to be good, man. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be good, man. And he's really not even – you know, anywhere close to as good as he can no. be. It's really ridiculous. Like, his ceiling's so high. Like, mm -hmm. people see what they see, and they're like, oh, wow, like, he's good. But y'all don't even understand how much better he can get. And that's really kind of – it's good, great for us, man. We love it, you know, as yeah. the OU, you know, as, you know, my, I'm part of the team and, you know, we'll be a part of a, the fan base soon, you know, but – uh, it'll be, it's great for us, but it's really kind of scary for college football, man. That kid's going to be 
for easy. He's, he's just a freshman. Good. He's just yeah. an eighteen year old, you know. So I mean, he the kid is just running off of pure like athleticism, and you know, it just they don't know what EG knows, you know, like as far as just you know, like we used to say it all the time, you know. As you get older, you start learning like little tricks and little hacks and little stuff that you know that you just know as an older guy. You know, like. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's just a part of the game. You get older, you get wiser, you start learning stuff that makes the game easier, you know? Right. So once he, once he gets older, man, adds a few pounds, gets faster, <laughs> learns the game a little bit better, you know, learns some of EG's patience, you know, learn, watches a little bit of KB film. Boy, he's going to be oh, something. I think he's – I think he's learning from EG right now. Like I think yeah. he's watching EG every single day. And the here's what made it stand out, right? So for me personally, I think one early in the game he was making some good plays. I think he scored on one play. I was like, okay, like a direct snap. Like in my head, um, you know this. Like low key, like anybody can take a direct snap and go score. I'm not knocking him or knocking you or anything, but you know, like the difficulty of certain plays as, right. as a player, right? And when you know uh, a guy is going to be that guy. So he was making some good plays, and I was just like, okay, like he looks good. But then then I saw him take – I can't remember if it was a direct snap or a handoff, but he went to one side of the hole, broke down, missed the tackle, cut back to the other side, and was patient on the cutback got upfield vertical quick didn't waste any time i think he turned what would have been a one yard game maybe even a break even at the line of scrimmage to a four or six yard play i'm like oh he's got the juice this kid can ball because not only was it his athleticism that showed out on that play but it was the patience because at the beginning of the play i thought it was eg i'm not even gonna lie to you but then yeah. i see him get tackled and get up and i'm like oh this is the freshman I'm like, oh, that's 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 a senior move. Like the difference, ladies and gentlemen, listeners, between a, a, a good running back is a great and a great running back is one that can make somebody miss in the hole, see the rest of the field, and keep going. You know, not one that just makes one miss and then just one runs blindly because like, oh, like their timing is off, but one that can get there, bah bah, make a play. And then make something else happen. And he's showing slowly but surely small signs of EG ish type of style here. Mm -hmm. You know, Kennedy Brooks type of smoothness there. And he's making a name for himself. So shout out to Barnes. Hopefully we have him on the podcast soon. Uh well, he's a freshman, so probably next year. But man, his like you said, his future is bright. And uh, you got something to look forward to as a fan coming no sure. time soon, but yeah. <laughs> For sure. All right. So more young guys made some plays too. I can't remember all their names, but um, who was some, who was some guys, you know, we was talking about this before. Yeah. Okay. So um, our Mason Thomas, he plays rush for us, defense and rush. Uh, man, Kid's talented, bro. He's going to be the next big thing. I'm telling you, and DP and I said it from the jump because we were watching him run during the summer and then his get off, man. The the kid kind of reminds me of like a Nick Benito type, you know, and that, I know that's going to get a lot of people excited, bro, but his first step is ridiculous. He has a crazy motor and he his he's probably one of our best pass, pass rushers as a freshman already. You know, he's really good with his hands. You know, they add a little bit of weight on him, bro. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, I'm telling you right now, I'm making, I'm calling my shot right now. That boy is going to be really good in the future. And then uh, another one is, you know, Robert Spears Jennings. He's number three. He played a little safety for us yesterday. He did a good job. People will remember him from uh, that hit he laid on a quarterback. Uh, and then he not like knocked him out of bounds. And everybody was like, ooh, okay. And mm -hmm. so. Uh, he played. He played really well for us as well. But yeah, the young guys are playing well, man. And uh, you know, they're getting critical reps. You know, getting critical reps that's going to help them in the future. But like I said, them guys are talented, and they'll be great players for us in the future. Not a young guy, but C.J. Colden 
transfer. One handed catch. Da na na da na na. Man. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy. That was crazy. It would have been it would have been even crazier if he snagged it, you know, a little DJ Graham action, but the catch, the bobble, that yo. Might be catch of the year. Crazy. Yeah, no, it, it definitely might be. It, it was still crazy. I think it actually added a little bit more to it, you know what I'm saying, that he was able to, mm-hmm. you know, come down the way he did because he was up there. If I don't know if you saw the play, but he, he was up there, and he came down and kind of landed in a way to be able to kind of grab it. And mm-hmm. It was a great play, man. And, you know, he's yeah. been – this is his second week with the interception. He had an interception last week, so he's been making a little name for himself, you know. So, shout Him, out to Steve, man. Trey Morrison making some plays. Key, key making some key plays. We gonna, yeah, key played a great game, man. I, I'm, I'm happy. We're to gonna have to talk key to get we out gonna there. have to talk to Key about his uh his celebrations after the play because like twice I'm like, bro, like please don't get us a penalty showing off, bro. Like relax. <laughs> Like he's going and flexing like right in front of the other team and and waving at the fans and all this and that. I'm like, bro, great play, great play, but but please don't please don't uh booky Bradley Hiles the situation. Um oh, wow. uh anyways, love book. Uh moving on to the rest of the bullfrog breakdown. Um I wanted to I wanted to play a little bit of devil's advocate here looking at Kansas and their offense. I think they did a great job in terms of their scheme, especially at the beginning of the game. And this is where the announcers were starting to get on my nerves because throughout the game, bro, oh my God, bro. I can't even remember everything they were saying, but they were chalking up good plays to blown coverages. You know, you know how the middle of the field is open versus cover two. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, oh, there, there goes Oklahoma leaving a guy wide open. And I'm like, bro, like it's covered too. Like nobody's protecting the middle of the field, bro. How can you not see this? And then they were, I think, uh, I can't even remember who had the ball, right? But somebody, I think Kansas's offense had the ball and you guys blitzed them. And uh, they threw the swing route. And, I'm, and they were like, another guy wide open. You know, this is bad football. I'm like, bro, like. It's designed like what do you what do you mean? And then I think y'all had um I think you or somebody else made a catch up the sideline and they were just I'm just like, bro, like you gotta give credit to the offenses. You know, right. you can't protect you can't cover everybody in a zone, you know what I'm saying? You know, right. I think they were getting on Woody one time because somebody was uh somebody was like in the flats, kinda underneath the corner. You know how like typically corners and cover four you know they each have a certain section and they're like 20 yards off the ball right you can't as a corner if there's two people by you you can't cover both of them bro and the announcers were saying small things that were starting to get on my nerves and uh, another example they were talking about marv bro they were like i don't know how they play texas last week and Marvin Mims only gets four targets. I'm like, bro, do you not know what happened last week? Like, did you not do your homework? Like, we didn't have a quarterback. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> we have Braden Willis back there. Like, granted, he's played quarterback before, but I don't think he's slinging it 60 yards downfield in the middle of the Cotton Bowl. Like, are you crazy? And me and the rest of Sooner Nation, we're just like, yo, like, somebody needs to get these fools off the television. Like, it, it was bad, but that's my little rant on the announcers. Back to the actual game itself. Um, Kansas, uh, they had a good scheme. Um, one thing I will say that they ran, which our defense, the OU defense, shut down, was the option. Um, I think they got us like once or twice at the beginning of the game, and they put Deshaun White in a sticky situation. I don't know if you remember, but it was the one mm-hmm. where the quarterback pulled the ball, and then uh, Deshaun is – um, you yeah, know, running between both, both of them. them. Yeah, he yeah, to play and he pitches the ball. Yeah, so I mean that that was schemed up very well because I think right. on that same play we had a we had a slant going away from the option, and then we pull the ball. He makes the right read, and that was just good football. Um, another play. Um, 
I think y'all had like eight people in the box versus a play action. Everybody crashes. They get the ball out. Um, they make a good play. Um, they identified you guys one time and man, they were in three by one, uh, cluster bunch set. And this was another thing the announcer said, um, the running backs ran, uh, the running, their running back ran a swing route and the three receivers, you know how we always used to run like a, a pick combo. Right. So they ran towards the linebackers, the linebackers couldn't get over the top and the running back was wide open. Uh, I think that was a third down and they got the first down, but the announcers was like, look at OU's defense, like leaving players wide open. I'm like, bro, it was a pick play when OU is in man. Right. You can't cover everything. But I say all this to say Kansas has some good things drawn up, and the announcer sucked. Um, yeah. So ESPN, if anybody knows the plug there, and uh, I'm sorry I've been bashing them. Um, I should probably say the announcers could have been better in that uh, I would be willing to have a conversation with them if they wanted to, you know? So I, I don't know if I can get a job with them now that I've been bashing them so much, but um, KU has some good stuff on good stuff on um, from the offensive perspective. Um, lastly, let me move on to our defense and then uh, we'll move on. Right. So I may catch some heat for this, right. But, Honestly, if their quarterback, who is pretty good, the one that was out, was playing this game, I think the game may look a little bit different, bro. Um, the offense is playing great. The offense played great that game. And uh, I don't ever want you to think that I'm against OU or anything. And I, I know you're there every day. But – they did some great things from a scheme perspective, everything that I just named. And they did all of that with the backup in, right? So I know this is like a can't unscramble, scrambled eggs type of situation. But um, as a former player, I got I to gotta be honest to the fans and let them know, like, yo, like, we won. But I don't necessarily think our defense – well, I really can't just point out the defense. I, I got to say the Sooners as a whole are out of the woods just yet. Um, I think that our our, our defense, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't, I, I, I don't, I, I want to be careful with what I say because I still know the guys personally. You know, I, I don't want to over criticize and, you know, we have you on the podcast, but um, we got some tuning up to do because, they were missing their best player, you know, and they still put up, what, 35? And uh, I, like you always say, there's small rooms or small margins of ever of error when it comes to winning these games. So uh, I'm going to leave it as that. Uh, just food for thought for the fans. Um, uh, I'm not going to go any further in bashing a player or anything like that. But uh, something to consider moving on to the future. Brayden, do you have uh, anything to to say off of my comments for the game? Um, I, you know, here's the deal. I don't know if I really too much agree with it. Now, there's always uh, room for improvement, you know. But here's the, here's the thing, deal about that Kansas team, which I said earlier in the week. They thrive off their running game, which Jason Bean can very much so do. You can run the ball. They're running backs that like that's been what they've been doing the whole year, holding the ball, you know, being efficient, running the ball really well. And I think I think our defense did a great job in that. A couple of those points come from the offense Two turnovers and plus our minus territory gives them a short field. So some of them points come from us. So we got to take accountability there. And then last but not least, I just think that the quarterback that has played is not truly their back i mean he is their backup and other guys was playing really well uh jalen but uh remember this is a guy this the kansas quarterback jason bean the backup this is a guy that was a starter for them he's like a 16 game starter he started like the whole year last year for them and also is the guy that almost beat us last year as well 
So yeah, there's things to you know iron He's out and everything like good. that. Yeah. You know, he I mean he is, but the guy the Kansas kid have been playing really well. The right. the starter. But Jason Bean's fully capable of being a starter as well. And uh he's the same guy that almost beat us last year. Also, if you watch that TCU game, Jalen gets hurt. They're down about 10-3. They go blow for blow with TCU all the way up until the end. I mean, the kid had them operating on, you know, all cylinders, you know what I'm saying, until the end of the game, and TCU just really outlasted them. So, uh, you know, I don't want to blow smoke, you know, up anybody's, you know, back end, but – you know, there's definitely stuff to improve. I'm not going to say that, but I think, you know, with what we gave, I'm talking about the offense, what we gave defense and, you know, conditions, you know, I think, you know, they it wasn't that bad of a game for them. You know what I'm saying? Continuously improve, and I think they'll be all right. I got confidence in them. You know, those are my guys. So, of course, I'm going to have confidence in them, but I got confidence in them. I think they'll be all right. For sure. And I have confidence as you as – a leader. Sooner Nation, we have a bye this coming week. Braden, are you doing anything? Please tell me you're doing something outside of football that's fun, maybe? Well, this will probably be the week that I get a car. So, <laughs> uh, fortunately. That's what, bro, but that's what I should have tweeted. I should After you score, after the next time you score, well, after you score, the next tweet is going to be get this man a car. That's probably the most that's that's probably the best advertisement you're gonna get right there. I just hope it don't come too late. Fortunately or unfortunately, didn't want to have to buy a car, but you know, fortunate that I can and that you know it's uh, it's a new car. So, you know, that's yeah. always a good little thrill. But at the same time, unfortunately, because like I said, if I didn't have that, I would have rolled my car to the wheels fall fell off. So, you know. Wasn't really planning on doing that right now, but uh, yeah, this week is probably got to be the week or next week. So, and it's the bye week, so I have more time to you know do things and you know maneuver that. So this will probably be the week. You. So, well, I'm yeah. glad you guys uh, got some time off. I always valued my time off because that long weekend, bro. Because I'll have what practice Thursday morning, I'm assuming, and then get the rest of Thursday off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, I practice Thursday. Uh, well, I practice every day except for Friday. So it's a regular schedule. Tuesday, we'll have meetings, but we won't have practice. We're doing service. We're doing service trips, basically. We're going to split up, take the whole team, split up into like groups of 10. We're going to cast the net over Norman and kind of just give back a little bit. You know, we're going to uh, – do habitat for humanity we're going to build some ramps we're going to paint some fences you know help uh with people's pets and just a whole bunch of stuff we got like 10 different things that we're going to be doing because we're going to split up into like 10 different groups or however many groups with 10 guys yeah just kind of you know give back to the community so that's what we'll be doing on tuesday which is pretty cool i thought that you know building time for that is that's special like it you know, still giving, you know, football all its respects because it takes a lot to win. You know, we're still going to be meeting yeah. and everything. But instead of just beating our body, you know how Tuesday practices are. Instead of just beating our body up, get a little mental, get the game plan in, you know what I'm saying? And then we're going to go on and go give back to the community that serves us so well. So, you know, I thought – I think cool. that was an impressive – uh that is cool. Not impressive. I thought this is just that was, you know, that's that just shows Coach Venable's hearts and the soul missions hearts, you know. I I, I really like that. You know, not just yeah. because we get a a day off of practice, but I thought the schedule that they came up is, you know, really really I like good. that. Bro, let's I love that actually. Let's put that in perspective a little bit, Sooner Nation. We have a team that is what, four and three. Mm -hmm. for the first time in a long time and we're using one of our bye weeks to go and serve the community that low-key has been criticizing us on social media at least for the past three weeks especially after the red river rivalry right so that honestly shows what type of person venables is and i love it 
I think it's a great bonding activity for the team. I think it's a mm. great way to serve the community, get to know the people that are around you. I love it. I, it's it's new. It's refreshing. I've never done something like that before. You know, I remember during my bye week, I'm like, yo, what can I do to just get away? Like, I don't care. Right. But yet here we are thinking about other people during a tough time. That's pretty cool. No doubt. Do you know which one you're going to be participating in? No, they'll probably split us into groups tomorrow, you know, yeah, on Monday. Yeah, tomorrow's Monday, yeah. Um, so, no, we don't know. We just – they let us know what activities we will be doing, like, in terms of, like, the different stuff that we can be doing. But I don't know which one I'm going to be assigned to yet, so. Okay. Well, you enjoy this week, bro. Stay healthy. Get healthy. Prehab rehab you know how it goes ladies and gentlemen that is all we have for this episode of the podcast enjoy your bye week yes we are still going to have two episodes this week tune in on thursday because we got some really cool people coming on to the pod that i'm sure you guys are interested to see who and where they are all right Lastly, I want to give a shout out to Officer Bobby Broomer. I hope I said your last name right. But uh, he works for the Walker Champions. He's an officer for the Walker Champions. And, uh, you know, he chats with my family all the time. And he always allows them to get a good spot for the Walker Champions. So I just wanted to give him a shout out. So shout out to you, Officer Bobby Broomer. Also, shout out to one of the bus drivers on campus, Nick, to him and his brother. They were at the game this weekend. Uh, Nick is always a good face to see around on campus. He's always honking the horn, saying what's up to players and that type of deal. So uh, once again, shout out to you, Nick, and appreciate you for being a good person and a friendly face for the Sooners. That is all we got, y'all. Braden? This is... All right, y'all. Yeah.